Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to work on our Urban Worm Bag version 2.0. This is the one that has the European night crawlers in it, and it's been doing incredibly well. We've actually taken some of those worms out and started another tote with them, so I could try that as well. But it's time to also harvest this system. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit more frequently, maybe uh, every two months or something, where I really start taking out some of this material out of the bottom, and we replace it with moist material on the top. And we're going to try to just rotate more material through this, these systems. If anything comes out and it's not composted, we can put it right back in the top, no big deal. But that way we can try to kind of get this flowing a little bit more and also not as compact in the bottom as it's really starting to get the pressure is building up on top and it's just pressing it down. It's making, you know, really tight material at the bottom. It gets it makes it hard to take out of the system, but also at the same time it makes it where the worms really can't work through that material at the bottom. So we're going to try to loosen it up on the bottom by doing a harvest. We're going to move the bag around by shaking and pushing in the sides. Harvest put more bedding in, put more food in, and we're also going to switch this up. Instead of doing my pocket feedings in each corner, we're now going to do total top feedings. We're going to have a lot of food every time. We're going to only do one update a month, but it's going to be a whole lot of food whenever we do an update. So with that, let's go and start harvesting the system. We're down here at the bottom of the bag, and we're going to go ahead and open this up. And I've got already, just so you can see here, my container underneath. Let's see if I can figure out which way this goes. All right. I'm trying to stay out of your way, which is why this is a little bit harder on me than usual for most people, because, well, you know, I'm trying to stay to one side. Okay, that's open all the way. Let's go ahead and peel back this. All right, shake some of that stuff out of there. It's only a little bit that leaks through. I have to say with this uh, system in the bottom here, I'm already going to put my glove on though. But with this system in the bottom where you've got a little funnel, it makes everything a little bit easier. Now you can see there's a lot of moisture down here. This is a little bit wet. Surprisingly though, I didn't expect it to really be this wet. But look at that, we're already getting some stuff out. We do have some stuff that's not finished already in this. Oh man, hold on a second here. This is a little bit more wet than normal for this. Normally I find it to be a little bit dry in the bottom, but this is actually a little bit more, you can hear the, the moisture in it. So I'm not seeing any worms, which is a good sign. Oh, there we go. Actually, never mind. found one worm. That's okay though. That happens. Some of them are going to want to crawl down to the bottom. You know, some worms like to wander. You can see this, a lot of this stuff is done pretty well. I do have this shirt. Here we go. This is a, remnants of a shirt coming out of here. I don't know if these... I really thought that all the seams in these shirts were um, cotton, but it seems like this one's maybe not. Maybe this is some sort of plastic. You can see right here. I'm not sure if this is plastic or not, but we're going to put that off to the side. We can always put that back in and see if it... let it go through the system again and see if it disappears fully. We're just going to go ahead and reach into here a little bit more. Pull down some more stuff. This is really compact here in the bottom. I'm glad I'm doing this. It really needs this to loosen everything up. I'm just kind of breaking up some of these clumps here. So, so far there is a little bit of a remnant food, especially these avocado shells. They do take a long time to break down. We've got an avocado pit in here. Still feels pretty hard actually. Um, well, we can send that stuff through again though. No big deal. Actually, here's another avocado peel, it looks like. That one's broke down a little bit more. All right. Nope. All right, now I'm starting to get some of the material I can feel. I feel like I broke a corn cob up there. We're getting a few more worms. So what I need to do, and uh, this is one of the few things that, that you do have to do with this system, is you got to push in from these sides, kind of... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this glove here for a second. I'm going to put this glove back here. And I'm going to kind of hug the bag. I'm going to just come around it and hug it and push the sides towards the center. Just to give it one last little bit of uh, stuff here. And you see we're already getting out some corn, the corn cobs that were sort of near the top. A couple of those coming out, some worms coming out. But we've got a lot of material coming out right now as well. So this is still a lot of composted material. But at one point, remember, this system was not working very well, so I'm not surprised that I'm getting out some other materials. We're going to put this back in top. We can get this working fully again. 
but there we go. So that's a kind of a partial harvest here. We're going to try to do this once a month where we just start trying to get stuff to move through the system rather than just sit in it. And we'll probably have to add a lot of this back on top, especially these corn cobs, you know, those avocados. Um, so oh, here's a big chunk right here. Looks like it's got a lot of worms on it. So we're starting to get too much of the, uh, the bedding material and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this up. I'm going to take off my, actually, I'm going to leave my glove on for this. We're going to go ahead and close this up. Grab the string right here and uh, anchor this closed as best we can. Come on out. All right. It's not quite closed up yet. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now I'm going to take off my glove. We're going to go ahead and put the string in this section right here and we're going to go ahead and zipper this up make sure your zipper is nice and clean um i have heard of i haven't needed to i have heard of other people using like a lubricant like a wd-40 on their zippers or you know a lithium grease or something to kind of keep them nice and loose i haven't really needed that and typically after these videos are done i can come up and tighten them back up and you can also use these little tabs right here make it where you've got a little bit more pressure that you can put it's a little bit harder for me as I'm coming out, trying to stay out of the way of the video. And there we go, almost done all the way. It's just a little bit left. There we go, so it's done. So as you can see here, we didn't get a whole lot, but we did get some. Um, but we're gonna try to start harvesting more frequently from this system and my other bags as well. And we're gonna try to just go through here and take out things that are in the bottom and that way we can kind of keep this rotating through. So with that, Let's go to the top and let's add some more material to this system. All right, so here we are back up top. And before we go into the system here, I just want to pull out here and show you the bounty that we got from this and what has to go back in the system. Obviously, we've got a mango seed. We've got that. I am going to throw this shirt piece back in there. I'm just putting everything up top that we need to throw back in sort of up in this section. We've got a little bit of paper that's undone. This chunk right here, another corn cob. Another paper chunk. Let's just see here. I know we had some more stuff in here. I'm not too worried about the worms that are coming out. This banana peel top. Let's throw that back in. Some avocado shell. More avocado shell. Another one over here. I think that's a piece of plastic right there. I mean, still, it's amazing how much plastic is in these systems. I'm just looking for place where I've gotten the uh, thing. This is another piece I think right there of plastic as well. It's not changing color and it looks shiny. So I've been trying to get rid of those out of my systems but I still don't know where they came from. They've been in there for a while. I've tried to whenever I find them take them out so they don't end up in my yard or anything. Another mango seed right here. There's a worm right there. We'll put him back in there too. Some paper. Here's that avocado seed that I was mentioning. We'll put that oops, up over here, along with a couple worms. We'll just go ahead and just grab that with whatever is over there. A couple worms right there as well. Another avocado shell. Another little piece of shell. Another shell right here. This looks like an avocado shell, though it looks smoother for some reason. And another little piece of shell over here, I think. Oops, there we go. I think that's all we had in here, really, that I saw. Let's just make sure... I'll flip this over. Oh, another piece of shell. And I, I don't have to get it all. I'm just trying to get the majority of it. No reason to have this go through the sifter and then have to throw it back in anyhow. Although I might just throw this in my other tub. This looks pretty good in here. And the worms are left in there and that in my storage system for casting. So they do work through stuff that's left. As long as it's not plastic. Got some more shell over here. So I think that might be good for this. A couple worms over here. I'll just grab those and throw those over here too. Although I don't mind. I know some people have mentioned, hey, aren't you worried about putting these worms in your yard and stuff like that? Um, where I live, I know it, it sounds sort of ridiculous in a way. It's very um, urban. I mean, I'm right next to a city. And I'm not too worried about the worms going too far. I mean, the most that they can go is um, 
really into my backyard and maybe my neighbor's yard. Other than that, I have concrete all around me. I'm not sure what this is. It feels like a piece of something though that's kind of hard. We're gonna go ahead and throw that back in the system as well. But I think that's good for now. And just so you can see over here, this is what's left over. This is what we're gonna throw back in right here. We're gonna throw all this stuff back in the system once we open this up and kind of go through it. Um, but we are gonna do that. So with that, let's go take a look at the system and see how that's doing. And we'll go from there. All right, here we are with the Urban Worm Bag, and it has been on the top here, and it's been, by the way, I forgot to mention, I think it's been 22 days. Now we're going to, first off, just go do a quick check here and see, do we see any bugs? And I do not see any bugs, which is a great sign. And we're gonna go ahead and start digging in here. By the way, I did take out the, uh, the catch for the fruit flies before this video, so I, I wanted to make sure I took it out before it fell over. Um, so actually, just so you can see it over here, this is that catch, that the thing that I had. I took that in before I <laughs> emptied it out because I didn't want this to tip over or fall over in some way and end up draining into the system. So I'd already taken that out, um, which I, if you're doing the same thing, I highly recommend you do too. I think the last time we fed was over here. And you can see they're moving through this material pretty good here. Oh, we can see right here, here's a pineapple piece. And you can see the worms are really starting to move through that really well. Um, really, it's just the fibrous material, it looks like, that's left on here. There's no pineapple left. And you can see they're doing really well in this system. Let's just dig around a little bit more. Make sure we kind of fill in the center section a little bit that we just hollowed out. Oh, hold on. This is a piece of plastic. That, I can tell, is plastic. It's nice and shiny. So let me just put that over there. As I said, I have no idea where this plastic pieces came from. I don't know what they're from mail or something, or they're inside something that has cardboard or something like that, I'm not sure. I'm really surprised that they're still showing up in my bins. But these worms are doing phenomenal in the system. You can just really see, just dig over here a little bit. I mean, the food is pretty much gone that we added last time, which is a great sign. Obviously, some of these things do take longer than others. So, with that, oh, hold on, there's more plastic pieces right here. Check get that out. As I said, every time I see them, I try to just get rid of them when I see them in here. Now look at that. Everything looks good. We've got this corn cob that's left. Stuff is really breaking down in here. More corn cob there. And you can just see, look at that. Look at all the worms in this handful right here. I mean, they're really, really working through this material. They're um, really liking this bin, I think. I mean, I can really tell that they're just enjoying it. Oops. Here is our, it shook out pretty easily that time. Um, here's our coconut shell. By the way, we've got a little juvenile worm over here on my glove that fell off. So they're doing a great job at this system. Let's just use this to kind of dig a little bit. Coffee grounds need to be broken open. But they're doing a really, really good job in this system. I'm really impressed with what they're doing working through this. You know, it's just the, uh, these, these, uh, oh, wait, look at that little baby worm on top. So, looking for cocoons, I'm not seeing any. Um, come on off. If you see any in the video, let me know. I am flipping through here a little bit quick. But there's that same pineapple top. Now, I'm mixing this up like this for two reasons. One, we just did a harvest from the bottom. Wow, look at this right here. Massive, massive group of worms in here. All different safe, all different sizes and ages. And by the way, there's no odor from this at all for those that are curious. But it just this this material looks great. The worms are doing a great job. They're really really multiplied in here. I think this is just optimal conditions for them. So I'm not sure. Oh, this is a piece of pineapple right here, I think too. So this is yeah, this is pineapple. They're the liquid from it is gone, it looks like, but it's, they're still working on it. It's very fibrous, this material. Um, if I didn't throw it in the bin, I probably would have actually put this through my juicer and juiced it, because I do like the pineapple juice. Let's just dig down in here. Oh, there's that piece of plastic right there. No, maybe I was wrong, okay. Dig down a little bit more over here. You can see there's just worms all through this system. They're doing a fantastic job. And we're going to switch it up today. So what we're going to start doing is, I typically feed, there's a piece of plastic right there. 
I typically feed, as you know, in my prior videos, if you go watch them, I have been feeding section to section. So I've been doing section feedings. So I'd feed, you know, over here and then over there and then over here and then over here and then I kind of kind of rotate around the bin, um, the tote, you know, quite a bit. We're going to stop doing that. We're going to do a different type of feeding. I know some people have mentioned it in my comment section, and we are going to add a layer of cardboard, a layer of food, and then a layer of cardboard on top of that. And we're going to go like that and see how things turn out. Now we're going to be adding a lot more food because of the fact that there's a lot more surface area here. And we're going to be trying to spread it sort of thin, even though the food is frozen. We're going to break it apart. We're going to spread it sort of thin, but we need to put a layer of cardboard on top. Now, before we do that, let me bring over our section here, and you can see right over here, of stuff that we wanted to add back in here. I'm just going to go ahead and dump this right over the side into the system, along with a couple worms that are there. There we go. There we go. That's back in there. Let me move this back now, out of the way. There we go. I think that's good. Oh, hold on, one more piece of paper right here. There we go. So we added that back in. That can be on top. It's perfectly fine. Now, another item that has been talked about multiple times whenever I'm adding paper to this is why am I not adding wet cardboard? I'm always adding dry. And typically the system, you know, it's hard to know how much moisture is going to end up in a system when you add food. But this time we are going to add, I have some water here in a container. We're going to go ahead and put the bedding in there and then we're going to move it into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a handful of bedding and right over here, we're going to bring this right over here. We're going to just drop this right in there. And I only have a certain, I don't have a whole lot of water in here, but I do have water in here. So we're going to just keep adding more and more bedding into this until it's saturated. And then we're going to use all this bedding in the system. So I'm just going to keep adding this in here. I don't want to put it down over here because it's, uh, well, you know, I don't want to put it down in the, uh, the worm stuff. So I'm going to kind of work this through. These gloves, by the way, are waterproof, which is why I love these gloves, um, up to the cloth on top. So I'm just going to continue to do this. We're going to keep adding more and more. I'm going to add a couple handfuls this time off to the side here. And it's okay that some of the cardboard's falling in there. We're just going to kind of rotate this around, try to get this all wet in here. And I'm not, so it's not fully soaked. It's not like it's saturated, like it's not been sitting in the water, but this way I can kind of control the water. That's why I'm using this container. Um, this is water with the BTI mix, by the way, if you're curious. And you can see we've still got water left in there, so we're going to add to add some more cardboard because I figured that we're going to be needing a lot of cardboard for this anyhow, so this is all good. So we're just continuing to stir this up. Now, while I'm doing this, I do have a question here. I I have done Bokashi in the past, and I'm making a video on that right now. Uh, and has anybody ever added the, was it lactis, lactic acid bacteria to a worm bin? If you have, please leave a comment down below. All right, we're starting to, we still have some water left over, but we're going to put this off to the side for now. And we're going to grab, actually, we're, actually, we're going to put a little bit of dry cardboard in the bottom because we want to kind of protect the worms from the food that we're going to put in that's frozen. So we're just going to add a, a layer of cardboard. So we're going to be adding a lot of cardboard during this because of the fact that we're going to be adding more food than normal. But the idea is to hopefully have it where the worms themselves are going to be really maneuvering through this entire system. I'm going to add a couple more here, handfuls to this bin, so we can try to get that also filled up here. So, because the wet cardboard is going to go on top, and that wet card, the reason why I want wet cardboard on top, by the way, if you're curious, actually, now that that's like that, I can do this actually. The reason why I want wet cardboard on top is because that's going to kind of soak through and also kind of keep the moisture in a little better. And it'll, it could evaporate, but it's just going to hit the surface, rebound in, and rain down on the top. That's perfectly fine, but I just want to try to make sure that we have that moisture content kind of coming from the top instead of the bottom, which, you know, this can soak up the moisture content from our food. Now, for the food, now hold on here, I'm just gonna shake off all the ice on here. And you can tell this is fresh out of the freezer. And that's why we have that protecting layer over there. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the first container of food, which is banana peels, 
we've got lots of tea leaves. Um, I know some people from England watch my videos. I've been eat, drinking a lot of tea lately. All right, so this is our first thing of food. We really, before we uh, finish with this though, and you'd be like, oh, we're good. We gotta break this apart. We gotta really spread it out along the top. And had I uh, thought ahead, I could have thawed this out maybe a little bit more, but it's a little hard for me to do at times. So we're gonna go ahead and just break this apart just like this. And we're gonna add two containers like this or two containers just total. But look at this, we're gonna just go ahead and break this apart, spread this all around the system. Just like that. That's what we wanna do, just break everything apart. I would like to break these open, actually, these uh, coffee grounds. Those things, for some reason, when they're sealed like that, they don't seem to break down quite as quickly, I've found, as when they're open, and they can get more of that microbial activity going inside. So unfortunately they're still kind of closed up in there, but that's okay. So now for the second one. So this has celery, carrot, coffee grounds, banana. Um, looks like there's a, coffee, a tea bag in here. Um, and it looks like that might be it. So this next, this next one, hold on here, let's just again knock the ice off the top. That's gonna add some little bit of water, which is fine. This one's not quite as filled as the other one was. So this one we have a, okay, now this is something I do want to mention here. We have a tomato here. So, oops. We have a tomato. Um, I have had tomatoes grow in my bins. These seeds will make it through, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it, just so other people know. This is an apple that went bad. Apple core, lots of coffee grounds. We have some beets in here, some, some tops of beets. So this is a good variety diet for them, which is also something you really want. Lots of tea also in this one too. Um, lots of banana peels. This one was a, we go through a lot of bananas in the house. I think I've been over that before. I make a lot of fruit shakes for myself and for my kids. So we go through quite a few bananas. Coffee's primarily my wife. I drink tea. So just so you get a sense of what we are as a family here. The beets, by the way, are me. That's for when I juice up more tomatoes. Those are all my wife though, with the tomatoes. I don't actually do not eat tomatoes, unless it's uh, ground up in a sauce. So, all right, I can't get this last clump apart here. That's okay. All right, we're gonna have to leave that one together, which is okay. But now what we wanna do is we're gonna cover this with a little bit of paper. Uh, let's just see here, let's try. No, I'm not gonna be able to get that apart. I have to use a hammer to get it apart, probably. So this is all gonna fall out and there's not a lot of moisture actually in this food, so we're going to be okay as far as moisture, I think. But the, actually, the next thing we want to do, and I am going to grab a mask here, is I do want to put on some uh, crushed crab and eggshells. I'm going to take off my glove here so I can get a mask on, because I really should be using a mask when I put this stuff in. The last time it kind of ballooned up in my face a little bit, um, and I had to grab one last second. This time I'm putting one on in the beginning. And we're going to put on quite a bit here because we're adding a lot of food. We're going to douse this nice and generously. Look at that. Now lots of, lots of grit in there for them to, to help them devour this food. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put on a little bit of dry bedding and then we're going to dump the wet bedding on. So I'm just going to grab just a little bit more dry bedding just to kind of cover the top a little bit just to make sure we have enough paper in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire container of wet bedding and dump it right on top. As you can see, there's still some water in there, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. All right. Now let's just scrape this down a little bit. There we go. Now this is also another one of the reasons why I do, don't typically wet bedding in advance. You see how there's paper stuck in here? I'm gonna have to dry this out or get that out because paper does grow mold. I know somebody said, somebody said it doesn't in the comments. It grows mold. The worms in here are eating the mold. That's why you don't have issues in a worm bin. But when you just have paper in your house, if it's wet and it stays wet, you're gonna get mold. It's a, it's a massive issue here. I know I have relatives that had mold in their houses and they had to, had to do stuff to get rid of it. I mean, it's not, it can cause massive respiratory issues. So you don't want mold. Now, I still don't feel there's quite enough paper on here, so I'm gonna dump in a little bit more. A 
little bit of dry paper on top here just to make sure everything's fully covered. And look at that, we added a lot of paper to this, but we are really starting to run low, I feel, in this system. So with that, I'm gonna call this a, that's it for today. Taking off my mask now. And we're gonna go ahead and close this up and give the, we, the worms at least three weeks to four weeks to, to work on this and we'll come back and take a look. They've been doing a great job. There's multiplying like crazy. I'm hoping that this massive feeding will make them kind of increase a little bit faster. So if you have any questions though or concerns or you know thoughts about this process, let me know what you think in the comments and we could take a look at it from there. So thank you for watching.